Hi, I'm Hayley from Parallel Coaching and in this video we're going to explore level two anatomy and physiology mock questions. So specifically in this video I'm going to explore a quick myth buster for you regarding mock questions in general but also then we're going to explore four different level two anatomy and physiology mock questions go through the answers and explain to you why they are the correct answers then we're going to explore how you can actually use mock questions to get the most out of your revision and i've also got 88 free mock questions for you that you can download straight away as part of watching this video the myth buster I've heard a lot of times that people genuinely believe that doing loads of mock questions is all they need to do in order to pass their exam and that they genuinely believe if they just keep going through enough mock questions then they'll pass. Now unfortunately that's false. So although mock questions are fantastic and they will show you what you know and what you don't know, they'll show you the areas that you need to revise and they'll help you with the wording of what to expect on your exam day as well as the structure of what to expect for exam day. So they're really, really valuable. And that's why with this video, you'll find 88 mock questions that you can download and really get specific on what you already know. And it will show you more about how you need to revise and the types of wording that you need to be prepared for. However, mock questions will not show you the exact questions and answers for exam day. So what do I mean by this? A lot of people that have done mock questions very, very regularly and not necessarily learnt the material around it will believe that the things that they have learnt in the mock questions are the things that will come up on exam day. Now, genuinely, they are versions of that same theme or around that same category. They are not identical questions. So I had one lady that genuinely believed that the type, muscle fibre type question came up that the answer would always be type one. Now, obviously that totally depends on what the wording of the question is and what the available answers are. So that wouldn't work as a strategy. And you've got to be careful that you don't see mock questions in that way. But they also don't teach you what you don't know. So the problem with this is that people learn them wrote or that the answer to that particular question is a particular answer, but don't actually know the ins and outs of the learning around it. So there is a specific way that you can learn using mock questions, and I'll go through those shortly once we've gone through four key mock questions that are likely to come up on your anatomy and physiology exam at level two. The first one, okay, are you ready? The way we're gonna do this is that if you literally pop your answers in the comments box below this video, and that allows us to kind of see how you're getting on and also allows you to have a little bit of accountability for answering these questions. So the first one, looks nice and straightforward let's see how you get on the aorta transports a oxygenated blood to the heart b deoxygenated blood to the heart c oxygenated blood away from the heart d deoxygenated blood away from the heart they're quite wordy to say out loud so have a look at the screen and you'll be able to really see those in your own mind take your time and read the question so really gently read the question and then once you have, I want you to pop your answer in the comments box below, and then I will go through that answer. If you need to pause this video, do that now, and I'll go through the answer now. So the answer to this question is C. It takes oxygenated blood away from the heart. Now there are two parts to this question and the options on the answers. First thing you need to know is that the aorta is an artery and all arteries take blood away from the heart. So remember, arteries equals away. They both start with the letter A. So that means we're down to the options between answer C and answer D. It can't possibly be answer A or B. Then you just need to know the circulation of the blood flow and know that the aorta is serving oxygenated blood to the body um, because it's not long come from the lungs, basically, what, rather than the pulmonary artery, which is the artery that takes deoxygenated blood away from the heart. So there you do need to have that knowledge and it might help to do a brain dump of the circulatory system so you can really understand how that works. OK, so the answer here is C. I hope you got it right. If you didn't, then have a little an analysis. Why didn't you get this one correct? Is it the wording? Did you read it properly? Or was it kind of just knowledge? Question number two, which type of muscle is striated and voluntary? So I want you to take your time, 
and read through this question and then pop your answer in the comments box. Your option answers are A, global, B, smooth, C, skeletal, or D, cardiac. Take your time, pop your answer in the comments box. And the answer is C, skeletal. So, obviously it's about breaking down this answer and this question. So the question is asking about which type of muscle. So it's about the type of muscle and whether it is striated and voluntary. So first of all, think striated is going to be something that has a forceful contraction. There's, so there's only two different types of muscle that have a forceful contraction, one of which is skeletal muscle and the other one is cardiac muscle. Remember the smooth type of muscle is in our digestive system and in our arteries, it's not got a forceful uh, contraction, which is why smooth is not striated but skeletal and cardiac is striated. Now the difference to understand the difference between the answers C and D is that our heart, thankfully, is involuntary. We don't need to think about it. So the cardiac muscle is the wrong answer. But skeletal, we can think I want my bicep to contract, so then it contracts. So that's why the answer is C, skeletal, about which type of muscle is striated and voluntary. Question three, which of the following forms part of the appendicular skeleton? Is it A, scapula, B, ribs, C, cranium, or D, sacrum? Again, take your time, pause the video if you need to. Remember, you can give yourself plenty of time. So on exam day, you'll have loads of time to be able to answer these questions. So the answer is A, scapula. Now, if you're slightly confused by this, then we have a really good video that will help you. So I'll make sure that is in the comments box so that you can go through and learn more about this particular subject. Now, we use the law of the ones and twos, which means that if it has one of them or if you have one of these things in your body, then it is a axial skeleton. If you have two of these things in your body, then it is the appendicular skeleton. Now, Cranium and sacrum, we definitely have one of, so that has to be axial. And then ribs, actually a class as the rib cage. We have one rib cage, but we have two scapula. So these are on the appendicular skeleton. That's the, the extra bits, not the middle column, but the extra bits. So scapula is definitely the answer to this question about the appendicular skeleton. And question number four is so our final question that we're going to go through. Which muscle is part of the quadriceps group? So again, have a little think, really read the question, read through your answers. Is it A, pectineus, B, sartorius, C, biceps femoris, or D, rectus femoris? Again, read through the question, give yourself a moment or two, and then pop your answer in the comments box. What do you think the answer is to question four? Okay, let's go for it. Okay, so the answer is the rectus femoris. Now, the chances are you're probably, if you've got this one wrong, you've just got confused between C and D, which one is a hamstring, one is a quadricep. So let's just start at the top. Pectineus is one of your adductors. Sartorius actually isn't part of the quadricep group, even though it crosses the front of the thigh in the same way that the quadriceps do, but it's not one of the four that make up the quadriceps. And then biceps femoris is on the back of the leg. So remember, see where it says femoris? That means of the femur. And the femur is our upper leg bone, that long upper leg bone. So that's the bicep femoris is on the back of the leg because it kind of, its job is a bit like our bicep in our arm. It, it flexes at the knee as opposed to the bicep of the arm flexes at the elbow. So the final one, rectus femoris, is the one on the front of the thigh thigh, so the quadricep, and it is the largest of all the quadriceps that we have, the rectus femoris, and that rectus femoris actually covers two different joints, crosses two joints, because it's responsible for hip flexion as well as knee extension. A little bit of extra information in there, which I'm sure is slightly more than you need for level two, but the main thing is to recognise what muscles fall under each of the groups. That's really, really important. So how did you get on with those questions? Please do pop a little comment below. Is there a particular area that maybe you're struggling with? Um, have a little think. How did you get on with those four questions?
Now let's have a look at how you can actually use mock questions. So the chances are right now, what are you doing? The chances are you're doing something in the relation to repetition. Generally people just go through loads and loads and loads of mock questions. Um, and they often try to learn the mock question itself, hoping that it will be similar on exam day, rather than actually learning the content. So the best way to use mock questions for your exam day and your revision is to look at your answers and categorise the ones that you got wrong. Now, what you need to do, we've got 88 mock questions, so you're going to download that, go through, answer them all. Once you answer them all, check your answers, the answers are on the bottom of the page, so you can go through them. And just categorise the ones that you got wrong. So go, why did I get that wrong? Is it that you didn't understand the question? Is it that you put a silly answer or didn't really read it properly? Or is it that you genuinely don't know the content, don't know the answer? So categorise them along that sort of vein. Now this gives you three different groups. So you can start seeing what strategy you need to be working on. Do you need to be working on your exam strategy? So how you read the question or your understanding of keywords within questions, or do you need to actually be topping up your knowledge? They're the two things that you'll get from this. It kind of goes, ah, actually, my knowledge is okay, I just need to refine how I read the questions. Or I can read the questions fine, but I just don't know some of the answers in a particular area that I can now go and top up my knowledge, which leads you to your next step of learning with the mock questions, Go and practice your exam strategies and test your knowledge after you've learned a specific revision section. So that's kind of how to use mock questions for the most effective result. And you've got 88 mock questions to go and play with. So all you need to do is download them using the link that is with this video. So when you click through to see the mock questions, you'll be given this page, which is basically explaining about the free download and what you can expect. So not only will you get your level two anatomy, it's mapped to level two anatomy and physiology, and you get those free 88 mock questions, those mock questions are mapped to specific awarding bodies, including ActiveIQ, CYQ, and VTCT level two exams. But you may find that even if you're working with other awarding bodies, that this still cross-pollinates and is still very useful. You also get a free bonus video um, to finally understand the heart and circulatory system. Now, that's an area that most people really struggle with. And you're also going to get a free exam day success guide to dissolve stress and anxiety. So whether your thing that you need to work on is knowledge, we've got that covered with the free bonus video, or whether you need to work on your exam day strategy, we've got a success guide for you as well. So you've got loads of free stuff, not to mention the 88 mock questions themselves. So go on through click the link and get downloading. Make sure you comment below what part of your AMP revision do you find most challenging? I would really, really like to hear from you. So just pop a little comment below and I look forward to reading your comments and also replying. Make sure you also hit like and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.